Welcome to the Building Science Podcast. Welcome to this. Okay. Oh, welcome to the Building Science. To the Building Science Podcast. 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 Welcome to the Building Science Podcast. Bringing the human factor to architecture and design. Brought to you by Positive Energy in Austin, Texas. Greetings, Building Science enthusiasts, and welcome back to the Building Science Podcast. Mark your calendars now, and don't miss the 2019 ATX Building Performance Conference on May 17th in Austin, Texas. The Humid Climate Conference and friends will be putting on a day-long meeting of the minds to discuss everything from air barriers to the best brisket in Texas, with speakers like Dr. Joe Stebrick of the Building Science Corporation and Dwayne Dahlman, FAIA of the City of Seattle. This will be a heavy hitting day, and the event will also feature an assembly mock up rodeo. So get yourself over to humidclimateconference.org now to register. Yeehaw! The Sand and Sandco 2 Gen 3 system is a split type heat pump water heater system that improves upon the existing high levels of performance and efficiency of the Gen 2 Sandco 2 system. The Gen 3 outdoor heat pump unit uses an R744 CO2 refrigerant to water heat exchanger, but can now produce hot water between 130 degrees and 176 degrees Fahrenheit via the unit control panel. This hot water can then be stored in one of three capacities, 43, 83, and 119 gallons separate storage tanks. The hot water is then delivered via an included mixing valve to supply domestic hot water to the building. The Gen 3 system has a coefficient of performance of 5.2 and can produce 160 degree Fahrenheit hot water in ambient temperatures down below negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat pump can now be installed at a distance of up to 50 feet from the storage tank, including 16 feet of vertical separation between them. That's a big deal. Installation is simple, with no refrigerant piping and all water piping connections being a threaded type. This unit has an extremely low noise level of 37 dBA, and a video detailing the installation process is available. The systems are listed with Energy Star and is NEEA Tier 3 approved. It's hot water, naturally. To learn more about sand and water heaters, please visit www.sandandwaterheater.com. Now enjoy the rest of the episode. Hello, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Building Science Podcast. I'm Christoph Irwin, here as always with my sidekick, Miguel. Hey, everyone. And we're again here at the Hive Conference. That's uh, Housing, Innovation, Vision, and Economics. Here in Austin, and I have the great good fortune to have found Amit Gupta with Aero Barrier. Amit, please introduce Hello, yourself. Everyone. And um, let's see, we'll just start right out with you. How mm-hmm. did you come to be the CEO of Aero Barrier? Well, it's a little bit of uh, timing and a little bit of uh, courage uh, at the right time, I would say. There you go. Um, uh, I was with Carrier Corporation. Uh, I was. Uh, one of their leadership associate guy was leading some product lines uh, for them. And one of the product lines was uh, AeroSeal, which is the technology for sealing mm-hmm. air ducts. Mm-hmm. And Carrier uh, had that technology for almost 10 years, I would say, and hadn't made much progress with it. Uh, it was losing money, etc. Uh, but I could see how I can really take that technology and turn it around. First, I tried to make the technology a viable business within Carrier, and it was the bad timing of 2008, 2009, where housing was really suffering, Mm -hmm. as well as the financial markets were really tight. Everything was Mm -hmm. locked down, yeah. Right, so uh, companies were not really investing into new ideas. They were trying to protect their market and their uh, uh, revenues, Mm -hmm. uh, and trying to actually divest everything which was not really making money. Right, So that idea within Carrier really didn't fly, that, hey, give me money, I can grow this. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, with my uh, uh, you know, timely courageousness, I would say, <laughs> uh, uh, you, know, you have that moments in life right? Yeah. Uh, where you say things. Uh, I told one of my bosses that if you don't want to do it, I'd do it. So uh, long story short, wow. uh, I could find, find some uh, private money. 
and uh, we could make a deal with Carrier uh, to take that company private. Fantastic. So that's what happened in late 2010. And uh, we since have uh, grown quite a bit, and we have presence now with aeroseal duct sealing from all the way to New- from New Zealand to Alaska. If you see the world map, you can kind of sort of take the two corners. Connect, yeah. uh, we have over 1,000 machines working around the world from uh, commercial as well as residential applications, uh, retro as well as uh, uh, new construction. So right. that's the aeroseal story. Okay, before we go much further, I realize you guys listening are probably wondering, what's AeroSeal? What's AeroBarrier? And that's going to be the point of this podcast. Let me just explain from a building scientist's point of view. AeroSeal functionally is something analogous to fix a flat for tires, but it's like duct sealing from the inside out. And AeroBarrier extends that concept to the enclosure. So both of them are... are, are uh, make a building scientist swoon because it's basically a technolo- technology that has the ability to change the entire system in a functional manner. So we'll start with AeroSeal. Okay. And so AeroSeal like, is like fix a flat for ducts. And interestingly, I see your name tag here. It's AeroBarrier. So you started with AeroSeal, and now the company is AeroBarrier, or is there one company that holds both products? Yes, it's one company which holds both products. Okay. So we're and in the Builder Conference, and... Builders have expressed more interest in Aero Barrier. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though we are doing uh, Aero Seal with some large builders like DR Horton and Madame and uh, mm-hmm. other large national builders, Aero Barrier has really gathered their interest, uh, yeah. especially with the, uh, uh, the code changes, which requires now, like in Texas, they require uh, 3ACH and you have to test the home, right? So that change has really opened the doors for us to bring this technology to market. Yeah, I can see that. And so AeroSeal's been on the market since 2010, AeroBarrier since when? Uh, We launched this technology at IBS this year uh, Uh, in Orlando. So 2018, that's when uh, it was made available. Okay, and and, and I will start with AeroSeal and we'll get to AeroBarrier. Because AeroSeal, I mean, I'll, I'll admit candidly, um, at first I was skeptical, just straight up like, that sounds too good to be true. So without proof, it was not true. <laughs> and then about a year into after I'd heard AeroSeal, I went and saw a demo. Mm-hmm. You know, and I saw the, like, actually it was the AeroSeal logo getting sealed in a sheet of metal, I think. And then a few minutes after it dried, I remember tapping my finger on that bond. And it was like a 5 eighths inch gap. And it was that feeling of like... And it was rubbery and flexible, right. but definitely not leaking. And I could push on it hard and watch the edges still grip. I was convinced. So came back from the conference, mentioned to Sean Harris, mm-hmm. um, who now runs IAQ Texas. He Aero Seal of Austin for a long time. And he invested in it. Right. And it actually did not sell like hotcakes, right? It, it, could you comment on that? Like, did you have, Were you surprised on its growth? Or did it grow just fine from a corporate perspective and not... I, I think we have pockets of uh, uh, success. Ah, and, interesting. Uh, not only whether uh, uh, when somebody is not getting success, there are a variety of reasons. For example, uh, we don't have that much success in Austin, mm-hmm. but our dealer right in San Antonio is doing hundreds of jobs. Interesting. Hundreds of jobs. And, uh, I mean, they're selling with every system they install. That's like 60 install. miles away. Right. Uh, so... Uh, and it's a little bit of an enigma for us why somebody is not getting good success, right? I mean, we have seen it time and time again where one person is not getting much traction and the next person comes right behind them or right same along market. with them, same market, and they get really good success. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's true for any business, right? Uh, well, so technology is only an enabler, right? It's a qualifier to really gain market. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of the entrepreneur and how they go to market. Um, mm-hmm. And and whether they're being invited in. I mean, I know in San Antonio sure. there's a few installers that are recommending AeroSeal work. Right. And so here in Austin, I, I don't get it. It's like the installers, they prefer hand sealing or, or they just want to pretend duct leakage isn't a problem. That's true. And Sean <laughs> has mentioned that multiple times that, hey, he shows people that, hey, it's leaking and they don't care about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if the market is too hot for people to not even care about to build it right. Uh, I haven't really dug into it. Yeah, interesting. Uh, but overall, around but the country... Aerosol uh, did fine? 
Yeah, Aerosil is doing probably close to 25,000 homes a year. Wow. Uh, and uh, we are uh, seeing a significant growth uh, on the new construction now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say it's still it is uh, 30 new construction, 70 retro. Interesting. Right? Existing Because it's so much harder to take care of it in a retro. Or it's impossible. It's impossible to do it in a retro. Unless you can take down all your sheetrock. Right. Much of uh, uh, but new construction is growing because people are requiring the testing and mm -hmm. people have become more aware mm -hmm. that, hey, they might be installing the systems, which could be quarter ton, half ton, more than what is needed. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so, and maybe uh, code enforcement is getting more stringent, more right. realistic. Yeah. Right. So it is growing faster. Yeah. Has it grown as fast as I had thought? Probably not. Right? I thought at this time it could be at least three times in the marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. We'd be doing around 75,000 homes. That's what I told my investors, right? Uh, but we're still doing very well, uh, right? The so, investors are still happy with you? Absolutely, absolutely. That's They're ecstatic. Uh, not only for residential, right? We're doing lots of commercial work. Uh, uh, we're working with every large ESCO, like Johnson Control, Siemens, Honeywell, uh, you know. Uh, we're doing very large buildings, yeah. naval bases, army bases, uh, hospitals. Uh, our dealers in Middle East are doing great. We have machines all over Europe. They're doing great. Uh, you know, uh, Frankfurt Airport, uh, uh, biggest Hilton Hotel in Saudi Arabia, hmm. Dubai Opera uh, Center. And, you know, just we can just keep going on and on where we see these very large installations. And, Fantastic. You know, very prominent buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, like J we're sitting in JW Marriott. Had this been in Atlanta, that JW Marriott in Atlanta was all aerosealed, right? So we're working with companies like Marriott, uh, host hotels, which are, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's been exciting for us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, has it really gone as we had thought? Probably not, but, yeah, but who we're knows getting the there. Curve right. look we're, like. we're getting there. Mm -hmm. We're getting there with aeroseal. Okay. And before we go to Airberry, I think it might be a good way to explain the overall kind of the, the physics, the mechanics of the process, just to talk about it with a duct. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I think you probably have described it plenty. Would you please describe to our listeners what, how you aeroseal a duct system or a distribution Absolutely. system? Absolutely. So the way we do it is we pressurize the air duct with a fan. Mm -hmm. So we attach our machine with a plastic tube uh, uh, with the HVAC duct work, right? So our fan pressurizes the ductwork, and uh, we are block, and then we block off all the openings, right? All the registers where the mm -hmm. air is supposed to come. Okay. Uh, when we have blocked that off, and we have pressurized the air ducts, the air is only going out where it's not supposed to go <laughs> out, which is the leaks. Right. Right. Uh, then we start injecting like a small micron-sized particles in the ductwork. So and it's about one micron. No, it's around three to four microns. Okay. It's a bell curve, too, yeah, yeah. you know, like five or six That's microns. That's incredibly small. Listeners, uh, a human hair is around 100 microns. So uh, those particles are designed not to really stick to the walls. They're kind of sort of suspended in the airstream. And as they suspend in the airstream, the air is getting pushed out of these leaks. These particles, as they try to exit through the leaks, accelerate significantly more. Mm -hmm. And with that acceleration, as they try to escape the, uh, the leaking joints, uh, this uh, you know, sort of uh, skid and attaches to the edge of the leak. Mm -hmm. So the first set of particles is basically attaching to the edge, and the second set of particles is attaching to it. Within a few seconds, the hole is sealed, right? Wow. So it's, it happens very fast. So, so it's like an aerosol of, right. of uh, like a caulk or something like that. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's an acetate polymer, something which is used in chewing gums and, uh, uh, and in the, the pacifiers and stuff, so it's very safe. Uh, is it heated? Uh, in some way, yes, it is heated, but not really. I mean, how do you aerosolize it? With, with, a, with the nozzle. There's a separate system. With an oh, air compressor. Oh, so we use air compressed air, mm -hmm. and then we use a, our patented nozzle to aerosolize it uh, in the system. Ah, so it's not just the material that's patented. It's the delivery method, how you turn yes. it into... A... it's the algorithm, right? In, in some way, it looks very simple. Hey, you're just pressurizing the air duct and... Putting this uh, glued... Right. Uh, fog. fog. Glued and fog, yeah. Up, but... Uh, it's not only just that. If you have to think about it, uh, we are not only controlling the particle size, 
we are creating an environment within the ductwork with the right humidity, with the right temperature, uh, with the right airflow, with the right air velocity, and controlling that in different environments yeah. to be able to create that right uh, so there really is an algorithm. I mean, is yeah. the computer controls that? Yes, a software because controls Because I was going to comment that the distribution system in a residential home is tremendously different than in a JW that Marriott. Is, that is correct. And so your computer-controlled algorithm would modify Work. parameters Absolutely. to adapt. Ah, I did not know that. Absolutely. Yeah. Fascinating. So t- tell me a tiny bit more about the material because... Um, one of our interests and our listeners mm-hmm. is, 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 is into air quality and sources uh-huh. of emissions. So it, it obviously would be concerning if the air distribution system had in it this adhesive that was a, like a pollutant emitter. What's it made of again? You said an acrylic acetate. Yes. And it's said an acetate polymer. Acetate polymer. Which is the same thing which is used in chewing gums. Hmm. So we're, we are actually chewing that stuff. It gets that rubbery feel in the chewing gum. Wow. And it's in the pacifier, right? Baby pacifier. So when you get that uh, uh, feeling, it is... Uh, so when you see the material or the seal, it is kind of sort of the same is consistency. It? The seal uh, is. You're right. Yeah. It's rubbery. I remember it. It was right. yellowish. Yep. Yep. And so. then, so what does it come in? Like it, 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 it comes in a, uh, like a one one gallon uh, jug. Jug. Okay. Yeah. And is it what, what color? Is it clear? It's is clear. It... It's white, milkyish. It's no different than Almer's glue in some way. In consi- when you see that in that form, it's oh, like it's Almer's like a big glue. jug of Elmer's glue. Has yeah. that similar thickness then? Yep. Yep, that is correct. And if you put some on your finger, would it be sticky like an yep. Elmer's glue? Absolutely. And so you aerosolize that. Maybe that's what the heat is for. I remember hearing about heat. The heat is to keep the nozzle from fouling, perhaps. Or I don't right. There is that. a heat element to it, but it's a very small amount of heat. We are not really heating the, uh, heating the, um, uh, the glue. We use the heat in the nozzle to be able to control the humidity and to be able to heat the compressed air, which evaporates the water and the sealant so that the particles can become of a specific size. Uh-huh. Right. So there is it. more experimentation yeah. and science behind it. it. So we're evaporating the water. We're not evaporating the glue. I got it. And right. so uh, you would heat the air more or less to control the relative moisture content of your sealant right. cloud versus the air because then it's going to disperse. Right. And we also control the air being pushed into the ductwork because we want it for a certain consistency so the Water we have evaporated from it is not, if it's very moist, then, you know, the particles would attract moisture again, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to control that environment. So uh, it's not the glue we are heating, to be very clear. It's, it's I didn't the, know that. Yeah. I get it. Because I have seen the, the heating coils. Yeah. It, looked, and it reminded me of like a big blow dryer. Right, <laughs> right. But Which that's is, the heat, the airstream, the mass of air. That's the airstream heat. There is a small heater within the nozzle, uh, which is for the compressed air heat. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're controlling the heat and humidity of the air to control the process of, well, of creating this aerosolized mist right. in the duct. Right. And then how is it that the, that the aerosol avoids just impinging on the wall, like in the main trunk line, and it doesn't impinge to the leak? Is that It is about the airflow, yes. So you're trying to make it laminar, low Reynolds name. Somewhere between laminar and turbulent. There's a state which is in between. So we're trying to keep that. And then the air velocity and the air flow rate. Mm-hmm. You're right, because laminar might tend to droop or hit the wall, too. Uh, right. And we can't make it fully turbulent, either. Right. 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 So, again, there is a, it's that science behind it, right, where you can just uh, control this. Uh, yeah. are, you, are you putting pitots downstream to know if you're affecting yes, that? Yes, we or? are. Uh, so we, are ha- we have a tube which goes in. The whole process is monitored with the software, as I said, right? So we are taking constant pressure measurements. And oh, right, because as it seals, it's going to change. Right, so it's changing. Yeah. The very minute you start, it starts changing the environment. That's where the algorithm needs to control everything, right? So the pressure is increasing in the ductwork, right? You start at, let's say, 25 pascals. By the time you're done, it could be 500, 700 pascals mm-hmm. in the ductwork, right? Because to yeah. get to the very end... Of that small holes left, you have to increase the pressure. Right Absolutely, that right. So all that is controlled with an algorithm. Fascinating. So it's actually it wasn't um, 
it wasn't like an easy, you know, duh, why didn't we do this earlier? It was <laughs> yeah, it is, uh, and some it is, it's, science. It's a very neat uh, uh, technology. And so you worked for Carrier. Carrier had purchased this technology. It wasn't thriving. You saw the potential. Let, let's go back to actually um, Carrier purchased it. And, and where did it come from? Where did the technology come from? So the technology originally was developed at uh, LBNL, where... Hmm. Brett Singer, who Brett we just Singer interviewed, was, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, works and the patents are held by DOE. So oh, these, are DOE, these are DOE Department of Energy patents, and uh, Carrier Corporation had, or that company, Licensed. Carrier Aerosil LLC, had a worldwide exclusive rights to it. So when we bought the company, we bought the rights to those uh, patents. I see. And so you don't own the patents, you own the rights to the patents. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And uh, we own our royalty back to LBNL every year based on our... And that was your big leap. Is yes, it? absolutely. So you put financial risk. You took on a lot of financial risk starting Arab. Well, I, I, it was just the timing. I wouldn't say it was, you know, yes, at that time, you know, as, as, as any entrepreneur, when they start, right, there are times where... You just are, lack of better words, sweating bullets and yeah. have sleepless nights. You get up in the night and say, oh, my God, what did I just do? Yeah. <laughs> Here's my cushy, nice job where I know every month I'm going to get a certain paycheck and I have a future, which is kind of sort of well-defined. And you jump into this well of uncertainty. It's dark and you're falling and you don't know when the bottom is going to be there. Is there water at the bottom or not, right? Uh, that's the leap of faith. Was it right. braveness or foolishness? <laughs> well, it, it always, out. it's a very, it's in hindsight, uh, foolishness, uh, you know, if you're successful, right. seems bravery, right? right? Uh, otherwise, if you don't turn out good, then, uh, you know, it seems foolishness, right? Uh, hmm. You know, I, I really like um, uh, when somebody asks me that question, I reflect back and if you know Jeff Bezos' interviews, right, mm-hmm. he, he talks about uh, living life with regret minimization uh, framework. Mm-hmm. That, hey, if I would not do this, would I regret later? Mm-hmm. Right? And that sort of is my philosophy as well. You know, why think about that what if, if I had done this, you know, that what if is, is you have short life. You yeah, know, it all, is very true. We're That's all true. dying slowly, so <laughs> make most out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's a well said. I've used the term, or I like the term, um, projected hindsight. You project yourself into the future to some way of being on the planet that you right. want to be in, and you look back and think, how did I get here? And it really gets back to sense of meaning, sense right. of purpose. Right. So I noticed you have a ring, so you sure. probably have a partner. Yeah. Did you have this partner when you made the leap, or since after the leap? No, we, uh, I had my wife with me. I, my wife was my MBA classmate. Uh, she's from Norway. It's a little, we are uh, a very multicultural mm-hmm. uh, family. So she was actually born in Korea, adopted by a Norwegian family. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, we, when we traveled, there was a time we were traveling on three different passports. I from Indian passport, my wife from Norwegian passport, and my kids with U.S. passport, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so when they say in the immigration line, you know, certain type of people go here. I'm like, okay, where are we going to go? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right, and so. so she was on board with the leap. As well. Absolutely. She's been an amazing partner for me, and I would credit her for uh, something like this. You know, you're so scared at times, and mm-hmm. if you don't have that support, yeah. uh, uh, you, you can't really take that leap, right? Oh, you need absolutely. somebody to say, well, don't worry about it. Let's go, because they're with you, Yeah. right? So, uh, I mean, she's... She's much smarter than I am. Uh, you know, she's a computer engineer, master's computer engineering, PhD, uh, and she's a professor of MIS at University of Dayton. Hmm. So she's an excellent partner and sounding board for me. I have the same blessing with my wife, and much smaller business, but similar. Those dark nights of the soul, she's there. And right. Okay, so you have this aerosolized mist, and it goes through. It seals the ducts. Um, I guess that's a decent way to extend it to Aero Barrier. So Aeroseal, the reason it's such an important technology is because um, air distribution leakage can basically nullify any benefit of a fantastic system. That is absolutely right? you correct. You could buy a 21 SEER air handler and get 10 SEER performance or something. True. 
I mean, look at the hotels when people take shower in a tall building and the humidity cannot be taken out of those rooms. You'll get mold, you'll get other issues in the building. Yeah. We have lot we have done lots of work in hospitals where they can't maintain the pressurization of uh, the operating theaters, right? I mean, the whole purpose of the building gets defeated if you can't get the building to breathe well. Yeah. You have ventilation systems at times where top one third of a tall building is overventilated. Yep. The middle ones are hardly getting ventilated, and yep. the bottom ones are really stinking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, people don't realize how how we have evolved. Right. We don't have windows which open. I mean, yeah, here this we hotel. Are. We have floor to really, ceiling windows, right? Can't open but them. you can't open them. Right. That means the building has to breathe. Yeah. Right. And uh, without good ventilation, it's just it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the ventilation systems are absolutely the lungs of the building. And right. if our lungs leaked, we would darn absolutely. well fix it. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, we're doing lots of work in Macau, Hong Kong. Interesting. And those are very humid places. Oh my gosh. And you can go to a very fancy place and go behind the scene. You'll see lots of mold. You see lots of problems in the building with humidity because they can't control it. I mean, you can't just put a bigger and a bigger system mm -hmm. to hyperventilate the building. You just can't. Yeah. Because then you introduce other issues mm -hmm. in the building, right? So. And so it begs the question: you know, if air distribution systems were built properly in the first place, there might not be a market for your system. But they they rarely, if ever, are. So it almost seems like there's a positive synergy between. Um, building in a way that's uh, somewhat cost effective and then adding the aeroseal process to it. Would you agree or yes. could you build I mean, just right from the beginning? Right. People have said, hey, if other people wouldn't make mistakes, then your technology is not really needed. Mm -hmm. I say the other way because like in New York City, lots and lots of new construction people are using aeroseal. <laughs> and the reason is it's significantly easier yeah, and a guaranteed result. Then mm -hmm. spraying and consistent. Yeah, guaranteed. I mean, I'm talking commercial applications. Yeah. Spraying every joint, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they have to spray from the outside. I mean, look at the ducts. And it's hard angle to get to. Right. And... Look at the ducts. They're not sitting in the middle of the room where you have three feet all across it, right? Mm -hmm. the, the space. So it's stuck somewhere in the corner, and two sides of the ducts you can't get to. Right. So they're using gaskets and they're using tapes and they're using other methods to try to seal it. And then they pressure test it. They still don't get it, right? So it's, it's an iterative process. So then they bribe the inspector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a very easy way of doing it. And we see this all over the place, this slight shift. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Too. Where aeroseal is the good go-to solution mm. uh, for sealing the air ducts. Uh, we have seen it in many, many applications. Again, we are, we are just scratching the surface. I do think you are, yeah, because uh, here we are in Austin, and I, uh, I fully believe it's a fantastic use of this technology, and yet it doesn't happen here. But 60 miles away in San Antonio, it does, and right. it just takes a couple of visionary mechanical installers, I think. To, well, uh, but commercially, know. it's done here actually more than residentially. Could be, could yeah. be. Yeah, I have to Sean check the data, me, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the you know... The, that's was, that was the excitement. That was the vision when I took over, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, lots of people told me I'm foolish. If Carrier, $15 billion company, can't make a go of it when they know every specifying engineer, when they know every contractor in the world, who are you to think you can make a go yeah, of it? Yeah, you know. And I'm like, hey, I think I can. It's just, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to just roll over because somebody says... Other people can't do it. That's why you can't. Otherwise, yeah. the world would stop evolving. Yeah. Right? If everybody has already figured everything it's all out, done. <laughs> then let's just... We're just, done. This is our society. It'll never right. get better. Right. So I, I, just stop believe, I just don't believe that. Okay. I have one more operational question that came uh -huh. up. So there's this really important piece in an air conditioner. It's called the heat exchanger. Uh -huh. Coil. And I don't want goo to seal up those. I don't. I shouldn't call it goo. I don't want sealant. your sealant to to seal up those mm -hmm. holes. It gets removed or covered or what? How do you keep you block away from it the off. coil? You block it off. Right. Oh, so you start after it then? Yes. You, you cut into the ductwork and start after it. Right. And then you hand seal around the coil or something. Around the system, the, or the cabinet, mm -hmm. we want to call it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This does not seal the cap. And then so if you do the return and the supply separately if needed, if there's a return. Right. You could do it separately or you can do it together with a Y, right? And, oh, uh, I see. I see. Uh, you can uh, create an airflow on both sides together, right. right, and take care of it. So that's common. You would do a Y. Yep. And now this is very true in residential equipment. In commercial equipment, we did, I think, uh, 50 very large uh, air handlers. You're talking of the size of this room, like 10 feet by 20 feet, aye, right? Aye, aye. And we sealed actually those air handlers mm. with aerosol, which is, now so we're getting the into the realm of, right, now we're getting in the realm of aero barrier, right? Because you're sealing the room, aero but room. those air handlers were sealed with the aerosol. Uh -huh. And the difference between aerosol and aero barrier is that aerosol is designed to take much higher pressures. Like, oh, so there is a difference. Aero barrier is not designed to take much higher pressures because houses not operate under two inches of water column. Right. right? But aerosol could operate into 10 inches of water column, 20 inches of water column. Oh, really? Very specific. Yeah, yeah, 700 uh, pascal. Right. Uh, 700, uh, 500 three. pascal is two inches two, of water yes, column. Yes, it's three. Uh -huh. Right. Aerosol, one-eighth inch seal, can take up to... 27 inches of water column. Oh my gosh. Right, so that is designed for air ducts. So when we start developing aero barrier a few years back, we were looking at envelope. And uh, that's where we designed it differently. Uh, so aero seal, the duct pressure increases as we seal. Aero barrier, the pressure does not increase as we seal. So the fan slows down and we're maintaining 100 pascals within the space to seal up all the, um, uh, all the leaks. 100 pascal or maximum achievable pressure? We get to 100 pascals because as you seal more and more, right, you get to 100. Right, but in the beginning you might not. Yeah, beginning you might not. That's correct. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so Aero Barrier, it's not just the same product applied into the building. It's a different Yes, the cons jug. It's, a, <laughs> is it the same con constituency? Is it? Uh, yes, it is somewhat similar, uh, but it's not the same. Fascinating. Uh, so, and the in, same patent from LBNL? Oh, no, it's it? all different patents. Ah. Uh, this technology, we partnered with the University of California at Davis, mm -hmm. and they own the patent, and we have the worldwide rights to them. Hmm. Uh, so we worked with them to develop this over four years, last four, four and a half years. And as I said, we launched it. Uh, I mean, patents are at important IBS. at IBS in 2018. Uh, the patents are very important, so I'm not going to say they are not important piece. But there is a host of intellectual property which goes into developing the pa from patents a commercialized machine, right? The algorithms, this chemistry, how everything works together, uh, right? All that is uh, is oh, I can call it like a trade secret mm -hmm. or other intellectual. And your property. firm does that, of course. And your firm owns that IP. Absolutely. We have the software engineers, we have electromechanical engineers. Uh, uh, we see ourselves as an innovation company, yeah. uh, not just, you know, uh, a commercial marketing company. Where is your company? Where is it? Where Dayton, you, where, Ohio. So you're in Dayton. Yep. But the place of aviation. Yeah, there yeah. you go. And then let, let's describe then a typical aero barrier process. How does it work? So it, homes as, and giant buildings too? No. Well, we can do up to. It depends on the it depends on the size of the building and how much uh, power fan power it would take to pressurize it, right? Uh, uh, but we're we're starting to do homes, uh, uh, so any size homes. Like at IBS last year, we did a home which was eight thousand square feet. We have done up to twenty thousand square feet spaces, uh, depending mm -hmm. on the leakage, etc. So the way it works is we are pressurizing the home with a big blower door. So it is no different than anybody who's familiar with testing of a home for mm -hmm, leakage. Mm -hmm. It's no different than that. We've modified it. So there's heaters again. In concept, it's the same as I said. So we're controlling the humidity and the pressures and the air flows and constantly monitoring the, uh, the leakage uh, with a digital manometer, right? Uh, so there is a tube which is sitting inside the home mm, to get the, the pressure outside, difference yeah. and the reference outside of the machine. And then we place these uh, tripods with nozzles That's all the around the home. So in air ducts, you're injecting at one point, yeah, and yeah. you're taking that sealant material fog to the very far end of the ductwork, which could be hundreds of feet away, yeah. right? In homes, 
uh, we are placing the nozzle strategically around the home. So at any point, the sealant material from the nozzle to the actual leak site is only traveling 10, 20 feet max, right? So it's not traveling hundreds of feet. Mm -hmm. That's the little difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so and we don't need why to create... That's because it's at lower pressures, or why is that? That's how we have designed it. And the reason is that we don't have to design a sealant material to take that a very high pressure, right? So we are maintaining a much lower pressure while we are sealing mm -hmm. uh, the homes. Uh, and larger the space, then it's just a matter of how we place the nozzles and how many nozzles we place to cover it, right? Uh, uh, so that's And that's where you how. move the nozzles throughout the home? Or is it just no, we just place them one time strategically. Wow. Yeah. So if someone purchases, oh, we could talk about that, the business side of it. But, yeah. Um, someone becomes an aero barrier franchise in a market, they buy a, a kit from you, sure. and the kit includes a certain base number of nozzles. Absolutely. It's not a franchise, so I want to very, okay, be very, very clear about it. Yeah. It's a dealership, right? You buy the equipment from us, uh, and then you provide services to your clients. They could be builders, they could be, uh, you know, uh, Anybody buy the equipment guys. from you? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you buy the equipment from, from us. And then there's the aero barrier sealant material, you have to keep buying that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the business model, right? You're talking about the business model. You mm -hmm. buy the equipment from us, and then you buy the sealant material from us. So we have kept the price of sealant material low because most of the contractors like the idea of having a fixed cost, right? If, you, if the sealant material cost is very high, like in duct sealing, then you know, sometimes you might need a lot more because the leakage is high. Sometimes you need to you might uh, use a lot less because the right. see, uh, leakage is low, they have a variable cost. Mm -hmm. So with the technology, what we have done is you pay us the fixed fee uh, uh, per home when you do the duct sealing. For aero barrier, we have used the same technology. So you pay a flat fee per home to us, and we provide you the sealant material. So it's quite simple for people to for the contractors to price it for the homes. They don't have to worry about, hey, how much leakage right. there is. Right, but uh, somebody's uh, taking a risk of we are. high leaks versus low leakage. Right. I guess there's average leaking. Right. So what we do is if the home is leaking a normal home, four or 5,000 square feet home kind of thing, if they're leaking anywhere from 8, 10 ACH, right? So if you have really sealed up the home where there is no leaks over half inch left, then, I mean, of course, if there are lots and lots of half-inch yeah. doors then is, open. <laughs> right, then, then it is a different scenario. But a reasonable starting point we have seen is anywhere from 8 to 10 ACH, right? People can get to that very easily. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, re re you're doing something really wrong if you, if you have starting at 20 ACH right. or something you like that, right? Issues. You have other issues. Then it's not leakage. It's like you haven't put the boards right. You haven't right. done things right. <laughs> <It's a building laughs> uh, right. Uh, and which we can't take care of, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, aero seal can seal up to five-eighths of an inch gap. Aero barrier can seal up to half-inch gap, right? So, those so, are pretty big gaps. Right. So, uh, if you start at 10 ACH and go down to 2 ACH, uh, you, uh, in 80 to 90% of the cases, you would need around uh, five gallons of material, mm -hmm. uh, right? And most of that is water, by the way. Right? So we, which gets evaporated. Like in ducts at the end, when we seal the ducts, few ounces of material is left in the ducts. Few ounces. Wow. It's a very small amount of material. It's super efficient in that. So way. let's talk about that. So the, you're putting in a few gallons of mist. Or you start with a few gallons and you end up with a few ounces. So most of what left was water. Yeah, it gets evaporated. And... and some solids must be, you know, in, in the duct system situation, getting past the gaps yep. and they're going somewhere else, but they're relatively inert in their chemistry after they get out. Right. Yeah. I think it would be a good thing. Uh, here's some business advice, just because mm -hmm. I've already had some people question me on this. They're like, I don't know if I want that crazy glue okay. in my air distribution system. I certainly don't know if I want it in my enclosure, right? You know, that... What is it? So if you could put like um, an Air Visual Pro or maybe just even a, a higher quality uh, VOC monitor in a chamber with some of the dried material and just show that it's not outgassing. Or, or you could do a, 
like I mean, a that, gas chromatography, but then you'd probably give we away can what absolutely your do that. I can give you one example where we did exactly that. Oh, fantastic! So uh, we were doing work in an offline or uh, offshore uh, gas platform, right? It's a two billion dollar gas platform built by Encana, one of the biggest gas company in Canada, and they couldn't get enough air into the air chambers or air locks, right? When you produce gas. There is a chance that you might produce H2S, which is a highly poisonous gas, and odorless, Chewy. right? Uh, and people can get killed. So they wear monitors to see if there is H2S in the environment. And if there is, they have to run back to the uh, uh, inside the building, and they have to be flushed with a right. big airlock, right? They couldn't get to that. And since it was a kind of sort of under construction uh, offshore gas platform, there were hundreds of people on it. So when we were sealing the air ducts, Right, that was one of the things left for commissioning the whole. You can imagine a two billion dollar yeah platform. A little bit of pressure because they couldn't get the pressures in the airlocks. They couldn't get commission. Right, so somebody was on the hot seat. Right, <laughs> oh, yeah. so we sealed that and we made it work. So that's good. But while we were sealing it, there's so many more requirements when you're doing work in that kind of environment. Uh, they were monitoring with a VOC monitor. While you were Con- sealing it. While I was so while even, we were even sealing while it. the chemistry was occurring. Right. We had given them that it's, it's like almost zero VOCs. This is no issue at all. They were monitoring it, right? And they could hardly sense it. And we have reports from them as well. They can hardly sense the VOC on, uh, on this. And there were two occasions where they got a big spike of VOC. Oh, interesting. And I'm like, hey, we told, I mean, the guy who was there who was sort of saying there is high VOC, they're like, oh, we found it. There is, there is some. Uh huh, we got you. Right, we got you. I'm like, it's not from us. You know what we found? There were people cleaning the floor with the household cleaning products, uh-huh. and the VOCs were coming from that. I was going to say cologne, but that also works. <laughs> right, I mean, it's just the cleaning products have 20 times more VOCs. I mean, are much, much more VOCs than, uh, than our yes, products. So uh, we have pro- used this product in working hospitals, in neonatal facilities. And I mean, we have done hundreds of in hospitals. Working hospitals. Yes. Wow. So we can show you that. Uh, you know, of, of course, it's a little challenging, but uh, we have passed through uh, every EHNS requirements of Mayo Clinic or no, really? Ottawa Heart Institute mm-hmm. or uh, Newmore's Hospital, Children's Hospital in uh, Florida. Uh, I can give you hundreds of examples where very large hospitals, and they are very serious about protecting their, uh, you know, what goes into the building, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, they have their own EHNS departments. We share our MSDS sheets. We share all the data we have, and uh, we've never had any issue. Nobody has ever, whoever has really tried to understand what it is, we have never had any issue with that. Fantastic. That's a good response. Um, wariness on the part of the consumer is also skillful in some sense as well. Of course. Um, of course. I think it's a testament to the era that we live in when people are more and more aware of what that is. Breathing, I right? want people to be questioning mm-hmm. it because if they are questioning then it, it then, your product. <laughs> then we can tell them, hey, we will solve your problem. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, mm-hmm. So, All right. So just... Uh, I really appreciated that I got a, a, a clear picture of the the way that the, you made this aerosol cloud in the aeroseal application by controlling the heat and humidity of the airstream. I don't see how, and you, you, and you have a you have a heated blower door, so mm-hmm. you're trying to affect something similar in a building, but it occurs to me that. Uh, you're ideally sequenced in so that the air the air barrier of the building occurs prior to insulation. Mm-hmm. So that seems to say to me that in an extremely cold environment or an extremely maybe an extremely hot environment, you'd have challenge controlling the ambient temperature where this reaction is occurring. Well, that's where the technology for aero barrier is. It has a much much higher range. Oh, it has a broader control. range of yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a different material, as I said. Uh, than duct sealing. Right? Oh, wait, wait. So, so it's different parameters. So the friendly, uh, the offshore data that we just talked about, that was for aeroseal or aerobarrier? That was, that was for aeroseal. And for aerobarrier, we have even better chemistry. Oh, really? Right. Tremco is our partner. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, we have used Tremco's uh, product uh, and modified it to use it for our application. We are Green Guard Gold certified and, you know, mm-hmm. so indoor air quality plus whatever uh, really? requirements. Mm-hmm. 
we have no particles or no element in the duct seal in the product which is in the nice. red list well you know there are different red lists which exist you didn't make the lbc red list you know, i can't imagine i don't know there's so many living red lists okay. uh, interesting yeah i think we looked into that yeah we don't have any uh, uh, any material which falls into the red list of wow yeah and so but fundamentally to my question if it's bitter cold out there must be some lower temperature below which absolutely absolutely so the way we do it is we have limitation of our heat is how much heater we can put in how many machine, BTUs right you because can dump in, yeah. right so we have 4500 watt heaters in extreme cold the houses are heated when we do this because they're drying the houses out anyway right so the houses are not really at at you're right in, in a, at 10 you're degrees right. right they're already at 50 60 degrees because right but work in there right and then we use our heaters and if needed we use additional heaters with our machine, uh, which can help and supplement uh, what is already in the machine. I see. Right. And so we too can hot control isn't it. an issue, like if it's 110 no. in Dubai or no. 120? No, that is not an issue. And so it's a half inch gap and just a tiny bit more. This is like my personal curiosity. So sure. I'm trying to imagine the edge of a gap, and I have this molecule that has impinged on the edge of the gap and it grips. Um, and then I have the next molecule that hits it, and you know, these molecules are coming at a high mm-hmm. velocity, so they're small, but there's momentum. It seems like they could rip off the grip of the first molecule to the edge of the gap, and the material itself could be friable or falling apart, you know, like if... Well, that's where the... You just keep coming at it with soldier after soldier. That, is, that is where the technology is, that we try to make a sealant material in the particle size and the control the air velocity, all that. So, and right? it's sticky so, enough, it has enough yep. chemical adhesion. Right. So the material dries non-sticky, right? When you see it, it's going to be like a bead of caulk almost, yeah. Yeah, right? So, uh, you know, in our, in our desire and in our uh, strive to be very sustainable, we don't want to waste much, yeah. right? Uh, and this, I mean, imagine you're, you're, you're putting glue and uh, caulking in every joint, not even knowing whether it's leaking or not. You're putting... You know, I don't know how many tubes of cock you throw away in a home. Yeah, plus the right? tube itself and right. the plastic and just, tip and the metal. We, we think we are 100, if not something like that, mm-hmm. uh, more efficient and more sustainable than uh, all of the alternative methods. I yeah. mean, Im- imagine if you're doing spray foam, how many oh, and the gallons and gallons of chemical you're putting in the house, uh, right? And mm-hmm. here, with less than five gallons, mostly which is water, <laughs> you know, uh, you can get the same or better result. So the big thing I see is that with this technology, right, we're not only making things easier for us to advance making better homes, but it also opens up uh, this industry in some way to the whole gender which is not participating in this industry, which is the female gender, right, yeah. the women. And our crew or our dealer in uh, Seattle is all women crew. Mm-hmm. But it's also that I feel uh, people are not growing up thinking they're going to swing hammer and, you know, put nails in the wall, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so this whole generation which is playing Fortnite and playing video games oh, and man. are on their smartphones and iPads, this is an invitation to them that you don't have to swing a hammer to participate in building Homes mm-hmm. yeah. and building building. It's a technology, mm-hmm. right? Uh, mm-hmm. Which will help you. So absolutely, I, I feel we are opening few doors, which yeah, are uh, which are really not open to people uh, otherwise, uh, right? Uh, and that that's the impact we think we can make. Okay, so those of you who might have noticed the background sound has changed. We are in the speaker lounge here, and there's some other people. So. Please excuse. We're getting toward the end of this. So I'm at the business side of things, right? There's been a lot of innovation there, right? Mm -hmm. Your IP with developing the system that delivers the the material to the duct or delivers the material to the building is one thing. But now you have the system that delivers that system to the job site and how you support your... Dealers. Dealers, thank you. I was thinking distributors. How you support your dealers. Um, Is that something that you're always evolving or how does that work today tell me tell me how that works so today. a dealer buys the equipment and then it comes with a full one year parts labor warranty we even support dealers uh, ongoing after that uh, 
uh, and uh, dealers buy the Syrian material from us. The equipment is designed well that if uh, you maintain it, uh, then uh, the equipment can last for years, you know, 10 years plus, right? Uh, so... Um, and there's training uh, associated with the purchase? We train the dealers. Uh, so every like one training, day, training is ever. mandatory. Uh, for aeroseal side, you get trained for two days for residential. For commercial, you get three days of training on site. Oh, on site. Uh, right. So you we come to them. Right. And the reason is because every market is a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, upflow, yeah, downflow, HVAC system, but, different, or different houses, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Ducks in the slab. Right, uh, yeah. right. So we want to train people at their locations. So our our uh, uh, trainers travel and they train them at their equipment, with their equipment, so they get familiar and they feel comfortable with it before we leave. Uh, same thing with Aero Barrier. We have taken the same model. So we go to their location. And we train them on their equipment, uh, so it's not, so it's not anything unknown, right? As you can see, our business model is not to sell equipment. Well, it is a necessary thing that we do sell equipment, but our business model is that our contractors and our dealers use this on a regular basis because we are in the business of selling seal and material and. Uh, uh, doing more and more work. Right. Our business model is when our contractors are successful in doing lots of work, then we are successful. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So it's a joint shared vision mm -hmm. uh, for us. Uh, we, in fact, lose money selling Is equipment. there exclusivity in territory, or how do you handle that? Uh, we don't really believe in exclusivity in okay. territory. Uh, could we support somebody and give them a head start? Like, hey, you'll have six months, a year in, within the territory to sort of establish yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, we're not selling it to everyone. You're, I could see how you wouldn't want to do that because if someone can't grow their business, right? And we're not. We, it's not that you know for HVAC contractors, for example, right? Uh, there are hundred thousand HVAC contractors from two man shop to very large company, hundred million dollar companies, and they're all competing. Uh, so our. Our hope is not that we would have tens of thousands of aeroseal dealers or tens of thousands of aero barrier dealers, right? Uh, we're talking of, you know, uh, I don't know, one tenth of that uh, in some way? No. One t so if we say uh, one fiftieth of that. Wow. Right? So a town which has 100 contractors, uh, uh, it could have uh, two, three contractors, mm -hmm. right? So uh, it is still exclusive, right? It is still, we want to have healthy competition. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, it's still exclusive with healthy competition? It is still a bit exclusive in the sense that it is not available to everyone I as an HVAC contractor, right? It's not like you would have 50 people doing it. You'd have two or three people doing and it. And you need to be a you need to be licensed HVAC contractor in in your region to purchase the Aero Seal? You might, you might not be, depending on the area. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And Aero there Barrier, are, there's no HVAC license? Or no, there is not. So anyone could be an Aero Barrier? Yeah, of course you have to be contractor, certified contractor, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that is needed. Uh, but insulation companies uh, could do this because they're responsible for air sealing today. Uh, some of the uh, rating companies could have a business for air sealing because they're finding the leaks, they're consulting with the builders what to do, and uh, they could also solve the problem for them. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, of course, they could have... Even big builders could have their own, right? Yep. And the builders, some of the builders can do their own. Most of the big builders don't want to do the work themselves. Mm -hmm. Logistically, it's business hard. Business model, yeah. Right. Uh, and so, the, um, I think staying with the business model side... You launched this at IBS in June, is that right? 20? February. February, okay. So, November, it's been nine months. Yeah. How have things gone with Aero Barrier since the Well, launch? we have close to 30 contractors uh, 30, around the right. country and in Canada providing service. Uh, and we uh, plan, or we hope to do uh, with these contractors around three, 4,000 homes next year. Uh, we uh, plan to have uh, 40, 50 more contractors next year and then double that. And so it's an uh, exponential curve, right? Uh, and there's separate uh, business units going to Europe and Asia? And, yes. Or no? We have been actually invited by a contractor in the uh, 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 kingdom of uh, Saudi Arabia. Interesting. Because they have a building, actually, I know, 
Prince is uh, He's in, in the news, news yeah, yeah. right? But one of the big buildings uh, have not been doing very well, and they want us to go there, and we have told them that we can't as, as of now. <laughs> uh, we want to perfect it here, right? Uh, there is still a little bit of learning curve. Mm -hmm. We're constantly refining our software. We're constantly innovating. Um, and uh, uh, it will be at least a year to two years before we go outside U.S. and Canada. How, how uh, if you don't mind, you can say I'd rather not say, but how many people are you employing directly with your firm? We have approximately 60 people. Wow, that's pretty big. I mean, I'm not all that big for a global sure. company, but... Yeah, but we're a technology company, right? So we see ourselves <laughs> not as a company which will have thousands of employees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We kind of sort of that WhatsApp, right? That 20 people could create a lot of value uh, for them. Yeah. So our business model is to have. I mean, if if we if we count all our uh, dealers, so we have 700 to 800 dealers uh, with wow. thousand machines. Uh, so if we can say two people or two uh, techs at each machine, we're looking at approximately 2,000 people indirectly mm -hmm. uh, associated with our company, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. right? So. so it's really big in that way. Okay, so I think I'm certain I'm going to come up with uh, questions I wish I'd asked you as we review this, but I have one right now. Mm -hmm. For both Aerosteel and Aerobarrier, if you were to be your own naysayer, right, is there anything that... like? Is there a weak spot that you're willing to share, or is there something? It's, it's an oddball question, I recognize. Sure. But um, yeah, I don't even know how to pose the question. Where well, would you like to see your products yeah, improve? Well, the, Maybe that's a better the way. The so challenge, where would you like to see your products improve? Right. The challenge that I see in our industry is extremely slow pace of adoption. Yeah. Right? I mean, an internet company, Fortnite could go from one user to 100 million users within a few months, yeah. right? Uh, WhatsApp can go from launching to having 3 billion users in like a few years, right? We will never get there. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a try uh, and uh, adopt method in our industry, and we're patient with that, mm -hmm. right? We have learned that it's going to take some time. Number two, I believe, as we had this conversation in our uh, discussion, uh, uh, homeowners are happy to sp spend trillions of dollars on healthcare than fixing the problem which is causing the healthcare issue, which is right? So which is just, I mean, we're leaving money on the table, in my, in my opinion. Our, our industry is so attuned to pay minimum wages to the, car, to the laborers who are building the homes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and uh, in turn, not being able to sell that value to the homeowners, and then they worry about cost. Yeah. I mean, when people talk about affordability, how could we not afford to build a house which is healthy? I mean, if we can have even 10% improvement yeah. in a kid's mm -hmm. resp respiratory uh, health, what is the value to that? Yeah. What is the value to a home where you can sleep peacefully? What is yeah. the value of a home? where you can use every room as it intended to be used uh, rather than never go to the bonus room because it's too hot, right? right? Uh, house uh, room above the garage are not good. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I feel that's a shame in yeah. some way. Yeah, I agree completely. That, that's a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic place to leave it, I think. Yeah. Thank you for your time, and thank well, you all for listening. I appreciate it. Hopefully it was effective, and uh, uh, you like the message. And if yeah. there's anything you want to follow up, let fantastic. me know. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm really excited. I mean, I'm really glad to have met you. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. You go. Pleasure. I don't know if there's a...